Coach Mike, thank you so much for your time. It's really great to be able to catch up um, in this way and be able to get you on here and talk some shop. So uh, for the listeners at home, will you tell us a little bit about your background, your motivation, and kind of where you are currently? Yes, for sure. Thank you for having me. Uh, My name is Mike Morgan. Currently, I'm the Associate Director of Strength Conditioning at the Citadel, which is a military college in Charleston, South Carolina. I'm originally from upstate New York, just north of Albany. Um, and I did my all my school up north in the northeast. I did my undergrad at the University of Rhode Island, mm-hmm. did grad school at Springfield College, did a lot of different internships up in the northeast from yeah. private sector to small schools to mm-hmm. coming down to the Citadel for a summer internship, mm-hmm. going back up, finishing my graduate assistant, yeah. and then being lucky enough to come back down after I graduated to kind of work my way up the totem pole from there. Mm. Okay. No, that's that's really cool. And will you kind of touch on, on some of those experiences, right? So, like, how has the, the private sector kind of set you up and what's that kind of been like or the transition from private sector to college and, and what kind of things would you even have recommendations for young coaches on that? For sure. I mean, you got to get experience in all the different settings because mm-hmm. I always thought that I wanted to own my own gym. Mm-hmm. And I interned at a gym in Rhode Island when I was in college mm-hmm. and I thought it was great. And then I started learning about kind of like the marketing mm-hmm. and business side of it. And I just realized that it wasn't for me. I respect the people that do it 100%, but yeah. I just learned that it wasn't my cup of tea. Yeah. Now, luckily, my manager recommended it to me. He said, hey, if you think you want to go be a college strength coach, mm-hmm. I know the guy that's a strength coach at URI. Why don't you go down to the bottom campus mm-hmm. and see if you can do an internship there? So that's how I got started in the college setting. Mm-hmm. Uh, but had I not tried those different things, yeah. I don't think that I would have known. And even in the college setting, mm-hmm. you know, I was lucky enough where at URI, we were a Division One school with a weight room right there. But mm-hmm. I did some D3 stuff, D2, yeah. UMass, right when they made the mm-hmm. transition with football, going to FBS. Okay. So a little bit of everything to kind of find what has landed me at the Citadel and yeah. to make me think that this is my niche right here. Mm, I like it. Okay. So what's kind of your passion life? You talk, touched on it briefly, right? But let's expand on that. Like, what's your passion life? Why do you do what you do? I do what I do because I want to pay it forward. Mm. I wouldn't be where I am today if it weren't for the mentors that poured themselves into me yeah. as a young kid mm. and a young strength coach. Yeah. And I want to be able to provide that for our athletes mm. and for our younger staff members that come through. Mm. Um, big influence on me growing up is I did martial arts my whole life. Mm-hmm. Um, and the life skills and lessons that I was taught with that, I think that can be easily taught in a weight room as well. Mm. So I kind of want to spread the message along with that. As yeah. Well. Yeah, no, I like that. Okay. So how is like coming up from your extensive internship past and like what principles have you been able to apply? You just talked about a little bit in martial arts and how have you been able to take mm-hmm. all of that stuff, right? I don't I don't know if you mentioned how many internships you have, so I think that might be useful because a lot of people, you know, if they get that one internship, they think they, they got a full-time job, right? Or they should or something like that. So um, yeah. what's that look like from your background and how have you been able to extract all of that, right? And then plug it into where you are. So, I mean, I started out as a senior in high school working one of the guidance counselors at our high school in mm-hmm. the private uh, training on this business on the side. Yeah. And I started helping him out and I did everything from athletes to uh, weight loss programs to mm-hmm. some senior citizens and yeah. quickly learned um, that some of those populations weren't for me, but I still thought I wanted to work in the private setting. Yeah. That's where I went to that gym in Rhode Island, Northeast Sports Training. Okay. Started working with the athletes there, like the athletes. And when we got big teams in there, you know, we would outsource teams. Um, and I knew that that team setting was for me. And that's where I kind of went to URI, mm-hmm. fell in love with the college setting there. Then I had to do um, a full-time internship in which I went to Holy Cross, which is in Worcester, Massachusetts. It was like an hour and 15 minutes away from URI. Okay. So for my last semester there, I would drive up and do that. Mm-hmm. Um, I stayed on for Coach Ollie's summer camps and yeah. did strength and conditioning summer camps and helped with football and basketball while they were there. Mm-hmm. Then when I went to Springfield College, you know, small D3 school in Massachusetts, we would help out there mm-hmm. the program. There was also a D2 school down the street, American International College, mm-hmm. that I helped out with on the side with their football team. Yeah. Um, then I did a part-time internship at UMass with both Olympic sports and football right when they had made the transition to mm-hmm. FBS. And then I did my summer internship at Citadel, Mm -hmm. came back, finished my GA, and went back down. But Mm -hmm. with that being said, you know, having all these different experiences, I'm lucky enough to draw from many different things, whether it be coaching philosophies Mm -hmm. or just ways to work in unideal scenarios. Mm -hmm. Uh, But I think that it's really important to not be 
just drawn to one certain type of setting, one mm. certain type of style of training. Yeah. And also, like I said, when you're younger, you know, work at a place where there's four squat racks and yeah. you've got to lift <laughs> offense, defense, and, you know, yeah. two of the four pull-up bars are missing and you got three quarters of a set of kettlebells. Like, yeah. if you can figure that out and how to work in that environment, everything else would be much easier. And then when coach asks you, hey, you know, uh, rain delay, we got to do yeah. something – know outside keep them occupied and we don't really have any equipment in the hallway like yeah. you're able to figure that out because you've been there and done yeah. that before yeah yeah i like that okay so let's dive a little bit more into like the specific setting you're in right now at the citadel right so how do things differ yes. um being on a military campus it is it is definitely different at uh-huh. first i've been here for four years so now it seems just like normal business to me mm-hmm. um but you know our kids they live on campus they have to live on campus They take a lot of credits, you know, Mm. average semesters, you know, 20 plus credits. So for us, that affects our scheduling. Like we can't have lifts throughout the day, which I know other schools out there that aren't military colleges. It it is tricky to get everybody there for a lift during the day. With us, we have a lift at 545 in the morning. Mm -hmm. And then we have to get them out and make sure that they're at breakfast formation with their uniform on. Mm. um, And then we do everything else in the afternoon. Mm. Um, So what that is kind of forced us to do is just be very efficient um, yeah. with our training just because, you know, our kids, when they leave, they don't put on shorts and a t-shirt. You know, when they leave, they're, they're literally, their shirt has to clip into their socks. They yeah. have to sign their, shine their shoes, yeah. make sure their buckles all are straightened up. So mm-hmm. even though on paper you have an hour to train them, you know, you need to be considerate of their time, mm-hmm. give them a couple extra minutes, get to where they go. Yeah. So that way they can do the whole uniform deal and, mm-hmm be exactly where they need to be when they need to be mm-hmm. um so that is something that does affect us yeah. just from a scheduling standpoint mm-hmm. um as far as training goes you know a lot of people would think that we would you know, back off on our kids you know mm-hmm. they don't have to do pt every single morning like okay. you might think yeah you know, when they're in the off season they'll have to go one maybe at the most two times a week and it's just jogging push-ups and sit-ups is not the mm-hmm. end of the world yeah uh, <laughs> But like I said, being considerate of their schedule yeah. is probably the biggest thing that goes the longest way with them. You know, okay. on Wednesday afternoons, if that's their only day a week that they're able to leave campus, mm-hmm. they would rather ask them. They would rather come in at 545 in the morning than four o'clock in the afternoon. So yeah. Yeah. we're more than willing to work with them. Mm-hmm. We come on in early, get them knocked out, and that way they can go. Yeah. No, that's really cool. And that was my next question was the PT thing. So that, no, that seems really manageable. So it's not too too much of an issue, really. So okay that's cool and then no and it's yeah. also good you know our, our kids have to pass a pt test you yeah know, if they pass it the first time uh-huh. they're done for the year it's oh, very wow. simple it's a okay. 1.5 mile run uh-huh. two minutes of push-ups two yeah. minutes of sit-ups and to have that hanging over their mm-hmm. head for like football the main master yeah keeps them active they take it when they come back at the start of summer and mm-hmm. then they're done with it mm-hmm. keeps them active you know yeah. i don't need kids doing heavy power cleans over at Maymaster, but yeah. I do need them to come back in decent shape and yeah. have been doing something. Yeah. So it's a good thing to have hanging over the head to keep them moving. Yeah. Um, same thing with the rest of the sports that, you know, mm-hmm. soccer, volleyball, they report in the beginning of August. They'll mm-hmm. have that, they'll knock that out, and then the rest of the non-fall sports will do that as soon as school starts. So it mm-hmm. is kind of a good motivation for our kids to stay active over the summer and not yeah. get sidetracked with other things going on. Mm-hmm. Okay. No, I like that. That's And that's good. Like you said, yeah, you just want them doing something at least, right? Cause exactly. Lot, like, so like, it ends up working out in our favor. Yeah, yeah. Because, I mean, you know, kids' tendency, no matter how hard they say when they want to work, summer is going to be summer. So they're going to be kicking it if they can, mm-hmm. which is good and bad. Um, but moving forward with that a little bit, right, what's kind of the training philosophy kind of look like at the Citadel? So, like I said, you know, pulling from all the different backgrounds, you know, we don't have one exact way of doing things. Mm. You know, I, I, coming from martial arts, I steal from Bruce Lee, his Jeet Kune Do philosophy was Mm. take what works, remove what doesn't, add Mm. what is uniquely your own. So that's, we are not just an Olympic lifting facility. We are not just a power lifting. We are not a CrossFit. We are not a Mm. bodybuilding. It's just whenever we are looking Mm -hmm. for those things, we look to those worlds and pull from them and mm-hmm. mix and match them into the right proportions of what's going to make the football program. The mm-hmm. Proportions are going to be a little different for what makes the basketball program. Yeah. The proportions are going to be a little different for what makes the wrestling program and mm-hmm. so on and so forth. But yeah. we're always looking to the best of the best and fitting them into what is going to be an athletic-based training session. Mm, I like that. And, that. and that's the best way, right? Because now you're covering all the gaps, right? Um, exactly. Yeah, as an athlete, they're, they're going to be exposed to a lot of different things. So people that are you know stuck in those one little rut right you're only looking at at 
just a piece of performance, right? We're trying to create total athletes, total body performance, right? So you have to train it in multiple ways. So that's really cool. Yes, without a doubt. And kind of like, I don't know if anybody out there has seen Coach D's presentation from a few years back, but he had a bell curve. And like at the left of the bell curve was kind of Mike Boyle's advances in functional training, kind of mm-hmm. like your basic fitness for the younger training age. Mm-hmm. And then in the middle, the main part of the bell curve is the tier system from mm-hmm. Joe Ken. Then on the right side of the bell curve, the top percent, that's where we pull from the triphasic. Mm. And that can be just the athletes or where we are in the training year, kind of yeah. pulling from those main three things and mm-hmm. then pull a lot from the track and field world from Dan Path and those guys out there. Yeah, yeah. No, those are a lot of intelligent names. So that's a really great kind of model to have, right? And so um, moving forward even even a little bit more with that, right? You've been able to, to be part of a lot of special things on um, staff at the Citadel, right? So what kind of would you attribute some of that to? Our kids, you know, I mm. wish we could take credit for it, but our kids are special. Mm. Um, they're here for a greater purpose. Um, they can't do it alone. We can't do it alone. So having a great relationship with them is hugely important. Mm-hmm. Uh, we say you get the standard you demand. So yeah. if we don't demand a high standard because we think we need to take it easy on them because yeah. their life is hard, then mm. they're going to take it easy. Yeah. And if we overdo it because we think that they're uh, extra motivated mm. and They'll do it, but they'll will grind them too far. Mm. Um, so just knowing the right amount of pressure to give them and, and demanding high standards and following through with that and giving them your best, I think is going to be the combination that makes that. Um, I'll say, you know, the teams and the athletes that have come through the Citadel I've seen be successful. Mm-hmm. Um, weren't always the most talented, but they're the kids that gave it them all, their all mm-hmm. and they worked their behinds off yeah, yeah, and yeah. they were tough. And yeah. I know that's kind of a, a taboo word these days, but mm. They, they, they were. I mean, they yeah. practiced hard. They lifted hard. Mm-hmm. Everything that they did, they did with their fullest effort. Yeah. Um, and that's what was able to get us to win. You know, back to back conference championships with football, and mm-hmm. have a couple wrestlers go on and be successful. And Coach D has been here during times of baseball and basketball successful seasons. Mm-hmm. Those were those teams. You know, they weren't the most talented, but they were the hardest working by far. Yeah, yeah. There's something to be said about having. You know that that kind of dog in you that just comes out. You yes, one hundred percent. Yeah, and you just you can't teach that. So um, to have that is is a huge asset. And no, uh, but you can unleash it. I believe you can. Okay. Maybe it's harder to teach, but you mm-hmm. can unleash it and yeah. demand it. And if you yeah. unleash it and demand it, I think yeah. that that's the result that you're going to yeah. get. Okay. No, I like that. And so pulling on that thread a little bit more with football, right? We talked about kind of general training philosophy about pulling from different areas, right? But what does that yes. look like um, more specifically in the football setting? And, and what do you guys do differently um, than most schools? All right. So speaking from mm-hmm. Coach D's perspective, because mm-hmm. he's the one that handles football, but I've been here for four years mm-hmm. and he does let me have a, a good hand in it. Mm-hmm. You know, when our, it all starts when our freshmen come in in the summertime, mm-hmm. they come in for four weeks we have them lift on their own. So freshmen mm-hmm. only, it's about 20 to 25 of them. Mm-hmm. Basketball freshmen will be in with them as well. Mm-hmm. And that's four days a week. It's very basic, upper, lower, upper, lower. No Olympic lifts for those four weeks, just mm-hmm. squat, bench, lots of push-ups, lots of pull-ups, lots mm-hmm. of single leg stuff. Just a very basic, like I said, kind of remedial program, but mm-hmm. letting them know what our standards are gonna be, letting them know how we operate, that really mm-hmm. sets us up for success. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then they come in during camp at campus camp we lift twice a week you know okay. we just kind of try and keep them moving keep them feeling better mm-hmm. and then once the fall comes around that's when either they're going to be non-travel or travel squad a non-travel mm-hmm. squad something that's unique with us the way our schedule is has kind of forced us to have this lift schedule for them they'll lift friday afternoon mm-hmm. saturday morning so you up on game day but they're not going to be playing and then sundays before practice mm-hmm. okay. um, and that's where we kind of it's not a straight tier system program because it's yeah. three days back to back to back, but we, we do have that kind of rotating element where Friday is kind of a total body day. Mm. You know, we do clean variations, deadlift variations, and then you know some upper body. Yeah. And then on Saturdays, big squat Saturday, cleans, mm. front squats, and then we're going to get after their legs. Okay. And then Sunday is more of an upper body day. We'll do one more clean variation with them, bench, and then some more upper body stuff before mm. they go out for a run through at practice. Okay. 
Uh, the travel squad will lift twice a week, Sundays and then Wednesday and or Thursday. Mm -hmm. And that is your kind of typical in season program. Sundays yeah. we're going to squat bench and do some accessories. Mm -hmm. And then the middle of the week is going to be an upper body day. And if the freshmen are on the travel squad, mm -hmm. then they'll, the difference will be that they'll front squat while the rest of the travel squad are back squatting. But mm -hmm. we're kind of limited with them. You know, they're yeah. getting the rotation for us. Yeah. yeah and then, yeah. you know, with the non travel squad, you know, we'll train for 12 weeks, for 12 weeks, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and we'll take them down. To mm -hmm. the floor, you know, Olympic lifting every day. We'll end up end the semester with testing their front squat, testing their power clean, and testing their 225 bench rep out. So it's a mm -hmm. good way for them to be motivated and kind of see where they're going to stack up against, you know, the upperclassmen yeah. at the end of the semester. And we tell them, you know, this sets you up for success for next year. You know, yeah. you train hard now, gives you a better chance during spring ball, which yeah. then gives you a better chance during camp to make the travel squad for mm -hmm. next year. Yeah, yeah. And no. then once everybody gets in, Mm -hmm. For uh, winter training, you know, our winter is very short. We start spring ball pretty early down mm -hmm. here. It's all based upon spring break. We want to end spring ball right when spring break ends. We don't want to be interrupted by it. Yeah. Um, which for me is a little bit different, you know, being from the north. Our spring breaks were always later in the year, but mm -hmm. there's times where our spring break is the second week in March. Yeah. So sometimes you only have a full week off season with football, mm -hmm. but we'll get after that off season. We'll lift four days a week. We will do speed and agility twice a week. We'll mm -hmm. do conditioning twice a week with them okay. um, and take them through to spring ball. Spring ball will lift twice a week because they yeah. are out of practice. Yeah. But we do get after it pretty hard at spring ball. We mm -hmm. run the triple option. We will smash when, okay. you know, we need to smash yeah, yeah, and yeah. we'll come back after spring break, after mm -hmm. spring ball is over and then usually have about four weeks and we'll yeah. run a mock combine. Yeah. Um, so we'll train and we'll get them ready for that. And mm -hmm. then that will set them up for their main master program, which yeah. is just kind of a straight tier system program, mm -hmm. simple, basic stuff that they can do on their own. Also yeah. making sure that they're going to pass that PT test. Mm -hmm. They come back in June, they take that PT test and then summers, uh, you know, lifting four days a week and speed and agility twice a week or and conditioning twice a week. Mm. Um, and that's kind of our whole year for yeah. football right yeah. there. Yeah. Um, okay. We do do some unique stuff in there from yeah. what we do from a uh, energy system standpoint. Yeah. Like this yeah. summer, Coach D, mm. I don't know if you guys saw him posting about we were doing these 220s. Mm -hmm. um, it came from uh, an article. I th I'll, I can send you the link to the article. Okay. I don't want to give you the wrong information. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it was meant to be, you know, 220 yards. Mm -hmm. We kind of modified the distances with the O line, the D line, the front seven skill guys, the linebackers, mm -hmm. the V backs, and then the outside the box the okay. speed guys mm -hmm. um, with different distances. So really, only the outside the box guys were running 220 yards. So it was basically mm -hmm. like gas or over back, over back. Yeah. Um, we would have them in lines of four, so it would be a one to three work to rest ratio. Mm -hmm. And we were able to track that. We had enough coaches. Each coach would watch three to four lines to record their times. We could track them over time, mm. give them numbers. And the goal was to be working for about 35 seconds. Mm. Okay. Um, and they would, we started with three reps and each week we added until we got to about six reps. Um, and then we would kind of do some stuff where we would do some stations, mm -hmm. then run to do some stations, then run to do some stations. So we'd mm. mix up the format like that. So I think what we do from an energy system standpoint um, is a little bit different here. But yeah. That's all props to Coach D. Yeah. He's led the way with a lot of that stuff. Okay. No, that's that's awesome. And, and I think it's a testament to like how, how uh, structured and how good of a program you run that, you know, you had all that kind of up on the top of your head. I know I didn't send these questions like as far early as I, as I planned to, but like to be able to have it down pat like that, you know, that's that says a lot about. I think you as a coach being on top of things and then your program, right? Like the trickle down effect. So um, that's huge. That's really huge. And then even with that, you got a lot of different hats that you wear there. You know, the, the staff's yes. not huge. And so how have you kind of been able to manage your time between football, which is a huge priority, right? And then the other sports you have, if you wouldn't mind mentioning some of those and, and how that looks and then the admin duties you have. Yeah, so as the associate director, I assist everything with football, and then mm -hmm. in the fall, I have a non-travel. Mm -hmm. I also have basketball, wrestling, mm -hmm. soccer, mm -hmm. cross-country. Yeah. Um, I do our internship program. Mm -hmm. I oversee our nutrition budget for football. Mm -hmm. um, I also teach some classes uh, yeah. on campus as well, not actually for the exercise science program. Mm -hmm. Our school has these physical fitness classes that the mm -hmm. kids have to take like four or six of them okay i think it is throughout their career and i teach one that's called strength conditioning it's literally just weight lifting for uh regular cadets on campus mm -hmm. there okay. so 
for from a time management standpoint, yeah. um, I've studied all sorts of people to try and get my life organized. Mm. Um, uh, props to Coach Ron McKeefe from mm. Trello that has saved my life because it keeps me organized and mm. I can access it from my computer, yeah. from my phone. I can color coordinate. I'm a big visual guy. Colors, yeah. due dates all on there. Everything that I need to do is right there. Okay. Um, every week on Sunday, I take a look ahead at my week and I yeah. organize everything. Everything that needs to be done by this time at this mm. day for the week is all sorted out on Sunday. Okay. Um, at the start, this is something I started doing a couple semesters ago. This is really helpful. I have a list of like all the big rocks that I'm mm. going to have to take care of. And that goes and starts on paper. Yeah. And I literally write in the due dates for the entire semester of when I know I'm going to need the different phases of all my programs, when mm. I'm going to need to collect data for our PT tests, yeah. when I'm going to need to order nutrition for football, for mm. wrestling, for basketball. Yeah. It's, you know, when wrestling goes from off season to in season, you know, I know to two weeks in advance, get in touch with those coaches and create the new schedule. Yeah. All the stuff that goes into the internship, you know, mm -hmm. when I'm posting for the next semester, yeah. uh, when I'm doing mid, uh, term and final evaluations, when yeah. I need to schedule their final projects, all that stuff goes mm -hmm. into the calendar. And then I put that into the Trello mm -hmm. in order to keep me organized. Um, without that, I don't think I could do it. Yeah, uh, I gotta have everything laid out a week in advance to okay. keep me organized. Um, mm. But that's been huge, keeping me organized with everything. Like I said, color coding and mm. knowing when the different duties need to be done, taking yeah. a look at the week ahead of time, mm. planning out my time for when things are gonna have, need to be done and when there's actually time for them to get done. Sometimes yeah. they're two different things. Mm. Um, so taking a look at the calendar every week on Sunday has been huge for me. Mm. That's that's. I mean, that's a lot of stuff, you know, and that's that's awesome to hear, you know, that you're able to do it and at such a high level, um, you know, and, and be able to attend to all these teams, attend to all these things, and then still pour into these interns and pay it forward like you were talking about. Like, that's that's huge, you know. Um, I'm not going to lie. Serial reminders are a huge help for that, too. And, like, stuff that needs to get done every yeah. day, as much as you would think of getting it's done every day, you would yeah. remember, like, if I know I, every night before I leave, I need to text the staff for what's the next morning. Like I literally have a reminder so I cannot forget. Yeah. Um, yeah. So stuff like that has been really, really huge to keep everybody all on the same page. Okay. And then we use group me for all of our teams. So every single one of our teams, our yeah. interns, our staff, our weight room managers, yeah. everybody has a separate group me. So that way it's all, you know, copy and paste if I need to, or if I yeah. need to send individual ones, like mm. everything is right there on my computer or yeah. on my phone whenever I need it. Yeah. Yeah. That's big. Okay. And then what have you been able to kind of learn from, from some of the other teams that you work with that maybe have uh, crossed bounds and you've been able to apply to even a different team? Yeah. Each team has their own different things that we can learn from. Yeah. Um, but you'll find that just cause it's a different sport doesn't mean that different athletes on different teams don't you know, you would think, you know, for example, you know, basketball players, they all, they move a little bit different than uh, football players, but yet some of those skill guys, they have tall hips, short torsos like basketball yeah. players do. And you get some overlap there and that's helpful. Yeah. Um, the cross country team, you know, as much, it, they oftentimes are, are stiff and kind of working some stuff with them and in order to open up their hips. Mm translates into other sports hmm. uh wrestlers yeah are a different breed um <laughs> you can definitely get strong without yeah. having to worry about packing on mass because yeah. of their body weight and yeah. sometimes that's helpful for some yeah. of those football guys you know as much as we all think all our football players need to get bigger you know there comes a point where they're big enough but we still have to get them strong without getting them huge so some of that stuff that i use with wrestling to make yeah. sure that they're not going over their weight class mm. can translate to that and with soccer the injury prevention stuff that i've done with them mm. um for women's soccer and acls i've definitely yeah. translated to the other teams as well and mm. they've been really really open to doing all sorts of different stuff mm. lots of single leg stuff all sorts of kettlebell stuff mm -hmm. um that I found that they really like in that from time to time, you know, I pulled out with the other teams and they end up liking it really well as well. Yeah. Um, so definitely all the teams teach me something that I can use with the other sports as well. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's, that's really, really cool. And I think it's, it's almost like a continuing education process, right? That you didn't really mm -hmm. intend for. Like it's just built in, you know? Um, so it's, it's cool to be able to, to pull ideas and, and deal with different populations and groups with their own culture, but then be like, oh, hey, wait a second. Like you said, like this could apply for this group as well, you know? Cause, yes, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. I know. When something goes over really, really well, mm -hmm. you know, you don't want to 
completely just apply it to everybody, but sure. chances are it's going gonna, it's gonna to go really well for somebody else. You just got to know who that person is and what that group is. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Okay. Um, and then moving forward into a different transition, right, and more kind of leadership and continuing education type stuff, right? So perfect segue. Um, yes. How does, like, your, your educational model kind of look in terms from, like, intern all the way up to, uh, like, assistance? Yes. So we have... Uh, an internship curriculum mm-hmm. that all of our interns will do, whether they're a full-time, you know, we call them practicum interns mm-hmm. or professional interns. Okay. Practicum interns are like cadets on campus that are just doing this part-time a couple yeah. of days a week, mm-hmm. um, all the way up to, you know, the professional interns are the interns that move across the country mm-hmm. and are there all day, every day with you. And they have a curriculum and I have bounced the idea around of making separate curriculums for the two types of interns. I know plenty of people out there do it. Mm -hmm. Um, But what I have found is that, you know, whether somebody's there part-time or full-time, they still need to learn the basics. Um, And our curriculum is, I stole this from Jim Caritzi, it's Mm -hmm. dual track. So every week we cover a topic in leadership Mm -hmm. and every week we cover a topic in strength and conditioning. Mm -hmm. Um, We use our staff Facebook group as like an online classroom. If you're ever taking an online class, Mm -hmm. talk about that leadership stuff because that's more discussion type stuff. Mm -hmm. And then every week on Sunday, they have to build kind of step by step a program that will turn into a four week off season program by the end of the semester. Mm -hmm. And uh, they'll end up defending that to the staff like they're on a job interview. Mm -hmm. And even if it's a cadet intern that's a senior Mm -hmm. that has never done an internship before or a grad student that's done three internships before, I still think that their ability to to build that program Mm -hmm. step by step, get feedback every single week from me and then build it into an off-season program is very important. Mm -hmm. Um, We kind of keep ours around the tier system, not because it's the only way to do things, but Mm -hmm. I like to think that that's not what our cadets or anybody is probably learning in exercise science class Mm -hmm. and something that's a little bit unique. Mm -hmm. So we kind of build everything step by step and then end up building that tier system program, Mm -hmm. expand it out to four weeks, speed and agility, conditioning, and then present that to the staff. Mm -hmm. Um, What differs is that I understand that a a cadet that's doing their very first intern Mm -hmm. Is, it's not that I'm going to hold them to a lower standard, but I'm yeah. going to, I know that I have to work with them a little bit more than a full-time intern. Yeah. And while they might both be writing a tier system program, those full-time interns know that I'm expecting more out of them. Mm-hmm. And to be digging into some more advanced stuff yeah. to apply within their program than just the basic stuff that the cadets, I, the first timers, I need them to learn. I need them yeah. to know the basics before they even think about anything crazy like that. Mm. Okay. No, that's that's a good model to have. And then what and do you, then for oh yeah, go ahead. Staff members, uh-huh. I skip over that. Sorry. No, yeah, yeah, go off. ahead. Yeah, sorry. For our staff members, mm-hmm. you know, every week, you know, they they have access to all that stuff. Well, we're kind of talking about that stuff on a regular basis. Yeah, yeah. Um, sometimes it's a formal sit down, like, hey, let's look at your program, let's kind of poke holes at it, and mm-hmm. see what you're doing. And other times it's just like, hey, I'm. I'm just about to finish up this wrestling program. Like, mm-hmm. can I bounce this off of you? And yeah. like. Even for me, like bouncing that off our younger staff members, mm-hmm. like I still like their input and mm-hmm. their help, you know, just yeah. because they're younger than me doesn't mean they can't help me. Yeah. Um, and then we'll do this. They'll do the same with me. You know, even if it's not a formal sit down, let's look at your program. They're like, ah, I'm looking at this. What do you think? Yeah. And then we kind of talk it out together. Mm-hmm. And I think that I know it's not a formal like educational process, but mm-hmm. I think that being, you know, in the trenches live like that is. Yeah very important so that's been huge you know every monday at our staff meeting coach d will print off you know a program from his archives that he has and maybe some stuff from joe ken or some stuff that he got Mm. from coach fight or just miscellaneous people within his network we'll Mm. look at that um usually we'll watch something uh as a staff yeah um like some sort of video or try and get a staff stipe going during Mm. the week and other times it's just in our staff Facebook group, like posting an article that we found or yeah. talking about a podcast we read. Mm. Um, I know that's a little bit more informal, but yeah. um, sometimes a lot it's of the learning it happens. is on the fly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, exactly. Especially when you're working in this environment. You know, it's yeah. like you have all the teams, all yeah. the stuff. Sometimes, <laughs> you know, I can sit down and read an article or I can yeah. try and deconstruct what just happened out on the floor that yeah. I actually do need to fix for tomorrow yeah. when I'm going to see the team again. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's. I mean, like you said, the structured learning is cool, right? But it's it's great to learn in the way that you're gonna have to work, you know? Yes, exactly. So, um, I think that's that's really big, and that was probably the biggest part of my education because I can read all the books and stuff on my own, right? But you're not gonna get that that uh 
you know, game time experience unless you're in trenches, like you said. So mm-hmm. I think that's really cool. And a big piece of that too is just like keeping a note file. So mm, like yeah. some people do a formal like after action review on mm. at the end of their four week cycle and yeah. what you like, what didn't you like. Sometimes it's just like this went really well in warm up. Let me write that down, remember it for next year. And sometimes yeah. it's at the end of the week. Let me think back to what's going on. Mm-hmm. But kind of keeping a file, just it doesn't have to be anything formal. Bullet points of stuff that you know, scheduling, mm-hmm. X's and O's, personnel, you know, class conflicts. Just yeah. so next year when you go to write that program, you go to get ready for that. You know, that right there is mm-hmm. very important and very telling as well in order yeah. to improve your program. Yeah, I like that. Okay, so what do you what do you look for when hiring for different positions? So when we're hiring for interns, so mm-hmm. practicum interns, you mm-hmm. know, those part-timers, yeah. they don't necessarily have to have experience before. I, a lot of them I don't expect to. Okay. Um, if they do, that's obviously beneficial. Mm-hmm. Um, but sometimes experience such as, hey, I, I was a summer camp counselor. Like mm-hmm. that tells me you were able to work with a large group and kind of deal with a little bit of chaos with young kids. Like mm-hmm. it's a little bit different, but that's helpful. Yeah. Um, we will... Um, First thing is, I know everybody says it, just make sure they're a good person. Yeah. You know, character check. Mm-hmm. Sit them down. Find out who they are. You know, why they yeah. come to school here. Or, you know, why do they want to come intern with you? Some of the yeah. basic questions they just kind of get you a feel to know them. And then for our those cadets, they'll just have to take me through a warm up and a SWAT progression and teach me how to do it. And okay. it doesn't have to be revolutionary, but yeah. I have to know that they put time, effort, and energy into it, mm-hmm. and they at least thought the process out, even if they thought it out wrong. I would rather have them try and explain it and realize that they work off than somebody who just kind of threw some stuff at the wall and made mm-hmm. it stick. Okay. Um, so if they kind of go through those two checkpoints, um, then you know we'll bring them on with us. Mm-hmm. Uh, actually, let me backtrack. Okay. First, they got to make sure that they submit their resume, mm-hmm. cover letter, Three references. Have you ever mm-hmm. seen a post from me? I stole this from Eric Cressy. Mm-hmm. In each one page, one file as a PDF. Mm-hmm. And the thought process behind that is just if you can't follow simple instructions to yeah. make a document, like I'm <laughs> not going to trust you with kids with weight on their back. I know yeah. it's kind of brutal, mm-hmm. um, but it's the God's honest truth. You know, attention yeah. to detail is huge for us. And those simple things go a long way. Mm-hmm. Um, then we'll sit them down, get to know yeah. them, and then we'll bring them back for that. For okay. our full-time interns, they'll same thing. They'll have to apply like that. Mm-hmm. Then we'll get a phone interview, or I'll kind of get a feel for who they are as a person. Mm-hmm. Now, if they're going to move here from across the country, I do expect them to have at least one, even if it's just part-time internship under their belt, mm-hmm. um, which is fine. At least they're not coming here to work all day every day, yeah. brand new. Yeah. And I know that's kind of tough, you mm-hmm. know. I'm asking somebody to move here across the country and work mm-hmm. for free, and they have to have experience, but. Yeah. So I want them is. to know that yeah. this is actually what they want to do. I don't want them to come down here, realize this is a terrible idea and have to move back. Mm. So it's not just to help us, it's to help yeah. them too. Yeah. Okay. Then we'll do the classic kind of video demonstrations, take mm. somebody through a warm up, mm. uh, take them through an agility drill and teach them to Olympic lift. They'll send those videos in. If then if that's good, then our fourth step is one more mm. phone interview. Yeah. And then ask them a couple, um, you know, basic programming questions. Like for me, it's not what's your program philosophy. Like, what is your personal workout like? like yeah. If they're telling me they're just kind of making stuff up on the spot, yeah, it's a little questionable. <laughs> but if they're telling me, you know, they're writing their own cards, or even yeah. if they tell me, hey, I'm following Joe DeFranco's, you yeah. know, built to last. At least I know that they know how to follow a program correctly. Yeah. Yeah. So if we do all that, and after we try and scare them away and tell them how they're going to work dark to dark every day for yeah. free and get no gear, yeah, if they still are on board for that, then we bring them down mm. um, for like, we just hired a new full-time staff member for okay. them. You know, we're looking to them have done a graduate assistantship mm-hmm. and have a variety of experience. So like I was talking about, you know, have they worked in the private setting? I know this mm. isn't the private setting. It doesn't have to be, but mm. you learn some good um, kind of business skills in that setting that yeah. can help you out in the collegiate setting. Mm-hmm. You now, have you worked at smaller schools? You know, this is for us specifically, but you know, we're a small division one school. We don't have a lot of gear. Yeah. Time is of the essence. Like mm-hmm. we, you need to have worked in a similar environment in order yeah. to set you up for success. Because if you've only worked places where you have unlimited technology and mm-hmm. all the time in the world, it's going to be very difficult. For yeah. You. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's part of it as well. And then they'll go through kind of a similar interview process, but that mm-hmm. last Instead of just phone interview with me and Coach D, mm. we're going to bring the sport coaches in mm. and see how they interact with their sport coaches. Okay. Um, because they, you know, interns don't necessarily have to interact with sport coaches. That's yeah. our job. But 
our full-time assistants do and they need to have some experience doing that we need to know that they have, can establish rapport with them and those sport coaches will trust them mm, okay no that's i mean that's a great process because i think it, it covers all the bases right it makes sure that um yes the applicants know what they're getting into it makes sure that you guys know what you're getting in terms of a product and it makes sure like um in terms okay. of the assistant the the coaches know what they're getting in terms of product so there's no surprises on any front yes this, exactly yep we we want to be fully transparent. Yeah. Like I said, you know, yeah. I said, try and scare them off. But yeah. It's the truth. You know, I, I just tell them how yeah. it's going to be. Uh -huh. You know, our schedule is long. We yeah. don't have a ton of resources. We yeah. don't have a lot of gear. But if you're down for that and willing to work with some athletes that will really go to war for you, yeah. um, then this is the place for you. Yeah. Does that make it difficult to get interns over there? Or how's that process been? <sighs> uh, I wish I could tell you yeah. that. There, I, I've been trying to find the secret formula to yeah. getting interns. Yeah. Um, like this summer, we had just we had multiple outstanding interns. Yeah. Um, and I wish I could tell you that I had a bunch of people apply and had to yeah. turn them away. And you know, these three rose to the top, but mm. you just have to be the three to four that actually applied. Yeah. There's been other times where nobody has applied. Yeah. Like right now for our fall, nobody applied for our fall internship. Yeah. Um, and then we've had times where you know we've I've had to turn four or five people down. Yeah. And. I've always done kind of the same posting process, mm -hmm. reaching out to everybody, you know, posting on social media, mm -hmm. on football scoop, talking to different professors, reaching yeah. out. I'm still trying to figure out. I don't know what it is, what exactly yeah. that works, what exactly it doesn't. So if yeah. there's anybody out there that's listening yeah. that can help me out, please let me know because um, we're always trying to find ways to recruit more interns. Yeah. I think you definitely got to be pushing on social media yeah. and establishing relationships with different schools and trying to bring those interns down, especially locally. Yeah, um, that's big. But sometimes okay. it's just luck of the draw. Sometimes yeah. just people happen to see your ad and yeah. be paying attention and other times they aren't. Yeah, yeah, no, that's that's fair enough. And, and that's the same experience that, you know, we kind of had over at, at Appalachian, the same deal, you know. Sometimes you have a, a, you know, a plethora of people here and then other times yeah. you get like one or two and you're like, well, I don't even know if they're a good fit, you know. So yeah, um, I'm right there with you and then, you know, you guys are responsible, I feel like, for a, for a large part of, part of, like, fairly good strength coaches out there in the field. Like, can you speak on this, on, like, what, you know, has made you guys successful in putting out a good product like that? Um, well, I only got here four years ago, mm. so there's eight years before I got here mm. that Coach D has kind of started that network. Mm. Um, and that's part of what the network is, it's just because... Yeah. He's been at one place for so long. Yeah. I mean, plenty of other strength coaches have large networks. Mm. They just, it's more attached to their name because they've yeah. traveled from place to place versus yeah. Coach D has stayed here the whole time. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think that by hiring the mm. right people mm. and bringing the right people down that will be successful in this environment and go on to be successful, mm -hmm. uh, I think that's what helps it out. Because, um, mm. you know, we could bring down a ton of people and if, we just know this isn't going to be a good fit for them. We're setting them them up for failure. Yeah, and that's why you know while we're selective, despite the fact we're hiring people to work for free, mm -hmm. I think being selective then lets those people be successful and go on and do great things. Mm -hmm. um, we have plenty of people that come through too that you just don't realize because they go on to other fields. We have no problem. Like we had a mm -hmm. baseball player that wanted to intern for us, but he's going to dental school. We said, yeah. why do you want to do this? Is it nothing to be with a dentist? Yeah. He said, well, I want to own my own practice. I think that learning to lead would be helpful in that. Mm. He interviewed well, yeah. he worked hard and it worked yeah. out well for both of us. Yeah. So we have plenty of people that come through and do that. Mm -hmm. We have a handful of uh, interns that went on to be physical therapists mm -hmm. and they wanted to do this because a lot of times physical therapy kind of bridges the gap between return to play and like yeah. full go. Yeah. Um, so I think that's another thing too is that we have a lot of people out there that have, are just in different fields. Yeah. I'm sure yeah. that a lot of other people out there are in. I don't think that you should limit yourself. If somebody's going to be yeah. a good fit for your department and help you, and you can help them, mm -hmm. you know, whether they want to be a dentist or a strength coach. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it doesn't matter to us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that makes sense. And then, um, kind of on on the leadership topic, you talked about you know how you uh, teach some classes and stuff like that. So, what's yes. that process been like, and and what can you can you um, speak on in terms of like creating even more opportunity? Yeah, um, I was lucky where when I first got here, they had already had uh, Steve Reich, he's at Northwestern now, mm -hmm. teaching an exercise science lab. So when he left, yeah. I took over for him. Mm -hmm. um, now, luckily, 
the professor who was running the lab at that time was like head of the department. Okay. And he said, hey, Mike, how would you feel about teaching? They call them RPEG classes. I forget what they stand for, but those mm. basically PE classes for yeah. the regular cadets. Mm. Um, how would you feel about teaching strength and conditioning for the like regular cadets? And I mm. said, sure, I, you know, I got no problem doing mm. it. And they give you a nice stipend for it. And yeah. the class meets once a week. I have two sections of it. Yeah. Um, but I think that uh, by doing a great, I wouldn't have gotten that if I hadn't done uh, at least a decent job mm -hmm. with those labs. And yeah. how we got those labs is, I think, just developing relationships across campus. Like mm -hmm. exercise science building is right across the street. You yeah. know, once a week, go walk over and say hi to the professors. Yeah. Even if you're never going to work with them at all, the they might need some help from you one time. You yeah. might need help from them one time. Mm -hmm. Like do the same thing with administration. Heck, I mean, even at like campus safety, you know, I need yeah. favors from them for parking passes yeah. for interns. Like yeah. every once in a while, I'll bring them. Well, I brought them banana bread because I don't yeah. want to be stereotypical and bring the police donuts. But yeah. I said bring the donuts that they like them anyways. Yeah, yeah. Um, so just developing those relationships all over campus. Yeah. Um, or you got to do it. You're missing out on opportunities if not, because if yeah. you don't have those relationships, nobody's going to think to ask you, Hey, do you want to teach this class? Yeah. Yeah. Um, or, Hey, can you help me? You know, my kid needs to be trained or, Hey, yeah. my, you know, my son's soccer team knows yeah. somebody, you yeah. know, these relationships are all over the place. Yeah. I don't want to sound two faced. Like I'm only doing them to get something out of me, but yeah. you're never going to get anything that you're looking for without yeah. knowing these people and you yeah. just got to walk into the building and say, Hey, yeah. And I think that's a, that's a good microcosm of, of what the field and strength and conditioning is like as a whole, right? Like you have to be able to, to bridge gaps and make relationships and, you know, talk to yes. people. So that's, I think that's huge, right? Yeah. And I mean, we're already, you already have to yeah. do with your athletic trainers, just yeah. do the same thing with other departments around campus. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Okay. And then moving forward a little bit more, right? You talked about some applications and, and materials and in terms of um, like hiring and stuff like that. So what other general yes. format tips would you have um, for like resumes, cover letters and things like that? Uh, first, keep it to one page. Mm -hmm. I think uh, Coach McCaffrey said the rule was if, unless you've been in the field for 10 years, yeah. correct me if I'm wrong, you got to keep it to one page. Yeah. Both of them. With a cover letter, yeah. Google it. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm yeah. no English major yeah. by any yeah. means, but... Yeah. I know at least the general format of a good cover letter, uh -huh. and I just want to know that you can be resourceful and yeah. look up the right format and yeah. follow it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. To be perfectly honest, I'm not doing a ton of reading of the yeah. cover letter. I don't mean to be that guy, but mm -hmm. I, what I'm paying attention to are, are you rambling on and on about random stuff? <laughs> are you just writing out a written version of your resume? Because you're not mm -hmm. supposed to be doing that. Yeah. Um, and, you know, do, do, can you be you know, just write a basic letter. Yeah, yeah. And then with the resume, uh -huh. um, you know, like I said, keep it in one page, keep it clear and concise, mm -hmm. um, and, you know, try and highlight stuff that's going to separate you mm -hmm. from other people. Yeah. Um, you know, like our interns, you know, part of their, their projects for us is halfway through the semester, mm -hmm. send us a resume and then, you know, we cover it, we give them materials on what, to, what it should look like, give them feedback, they turn mm -hmm. it in at the end. Yeah. They're always like, guys, I know as an intern that you're setting up and breaking down and cleaning. Like that's yeah. given. Don't yeah. put that on there. Tell me what's special that you're doing here yeah. that you think other people aren't doing that's going to make you stick out. That's what we need to see. Mm -hmm. And that's what I want you to try and write a sentence or two about in yeah. your cover letter. Yeah. Yeah. No, I like that. That's that's huge because, yeah, everyone knows you're going to do some cleaning, right? You're going to do some setup. You're going to do some yeah. breakdown. Like that's what the internship is like, you know, mm -hmm. across the board. Everyone's doing those things. So yeah, make it stand out. And then even with that, right, you, you personally have had a lot of extensive um, internships. So what does that look like in terms of uh, keeping it one page, but also like when internships should be removed? Like how does that process kind of look? That's a battle. I'm always, as I'm yeah. getting older, I'm fighting, but I try and keep that stuff on there to show that, you know, I do have a different background. And yeah. I just keep it in one line, you know, mm -hmm. worked with Olympic sports and football for, yeah. you know, those internships that I did, you know, mm -hmm. six, seven, eight years ago yeah. to keep them on there. Um, Eventually, at some point, I'm gonna have to remove stuff. Yeah. Um, but you know, tailor your resume to where you're applying. Mm. You know, sometimes you know, if I were to apply to another school, you know, I probably need to take off the private training mm -hmm. to add in some administrative responsibilities that I've done. Just yeah. like if I were gonna apply to a high school, you know, mm -hmm. I would maybe 
put the private training back on so they would see that I've worked with kids and yeah. you know take something else off of there that I'm not gonna that I wouldn't have to do in that setting. Mm. So tailor your resume to the setting that you're gonna be in. Yeah. And you know, one thing I left out I kinda talked about earlier, like if you were a camp counselor, like mm. if you coach youth soccer, like put that on there. Like I wanna know I want I don't want the same old, same old. Like we yeah. want somebody that's gonna have unique skills. Like mm. we all have them. Like what is that? Make sure your resume highlights that. Mm. I like that. Okay. And then moving forward, right, what are some resources? You mentioned some of them earlier, but that have had a big impact on you, whether it's like a book, podcast, or um, conversation with somebody. Yes. Uh, where to start? Um, <laughs> it's always a tough one, yeah. So for books, um, we all know the strength conditioning books, you know, yeah. the general ones, you know, Mike Boyle's Advances mm-hmm. Functional Training. Yeah. Uh, tri- uh, tier System and Triphasic, those are like the main three. Um, okay. From the energy system development, mm. the biggest one out there is that Joel Jameson, mm, the Eight yeah. Weeks Out, the Ultimate MMA Conditioning. Yeah. That's huge. Um, Charlie Francis's Elite Concepts, mm. that's really big for uh, speed, uh, and obviously that's more straight ahead stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but there are, there are a million books out there. We all have our favorites that we go to. Um, let me see. I, I, I sent a list one time. Mm-hmm. I think a big thing is the leadership type books. Okay. You know, branching outside. Yeah. I wish I would have done that a little bit earlier in my mm-hmm. career. You know, those Dale Carnegie, How to Win Friends and Influence People. You know, yeah. All the Patrick Lincioni books, The Five Dysfunctions of a Team. Mm-hmm. Jim Collins is Good to Great. Yeah. Uh, you know, built to last all that stuff i yeah. wish i would have read uh, a little bit earlier in my mm. career that i'm reading now yeah, yeah. Uh, podcasts obviously we're on a podcast right yeah. now you have all your strength conditioning ones mm. uh two of my most common podcasts i listen to mm. though aren't strength conditioning actually okay. they are uh dave ramsey's entree leadership mm. and then uh the learning leader show with ryan hawk those mm. are two huge podcasts that i listen to religiously yeah. every single time there's an episode released mm-hmm. i always listen to it yeah um there are plenty of others out there too but i think it's important to branch outside you know i still yeah. listen to strength conditioning as well yeah. but you know now i'm trying to learn from different stuff that yeah. i haven't done already yeah uh, like so that's that. why i'm doing that okay um as far as uh reading articles and stuff yeah. i think you know twitter has been mm. huge and following those you know the inc the forbes yeah. uh, business insider harvard business review mm. um, i think that you know seeing those things and following those business leaders yeah. um you know daniel goldman or goldman you know his yeah. emotional intelligence stuff you know seeing the stuff that they put out has mm. been huge in order to find stuff outside yeah. of the traditional strength condition because we all see the stuff that we see on Instagram, our Twitter, you know, yeah. we're all following that stuff already. So trying to find those outside sources, I think have been really helpful mm-hmm. um, in helping me with those, you know, administrative stuff, time yeah. management and all that. Yeah, no, that's good. That's really good. Um, there's a lot of resources too. So if someone's listening to this, look those up because they will make a difference, you know. Um, and then moving into this last segment here, if you have any, what are some quotes that you live by? Uh Quotes that I live by. Mm-hmm. I don't necessarily have quotes. Okay. What has really shaped me was my background in mm-hmm. martial arts and okay. Taekwondo. Yeah. Um, and what we had was every day before class started, we read the student creed. Mm-hmm. Um, and as corny as that may sound, when you yeah. say that every single day as a yeah. seven year old, yeah. um, it has a big impact on you. And yeah. like we had our tenets of Taekwondo like yeah. courtesy, integrity, perseverance, self control, and dominant spirit. Mm-hmm. You know, you can think of any five words out there, mm-hmm. but we learned about it every single day. We yeah. lived it every single day. Mm-hmm. And we always had a word of the month and a weekly message. And we always talked about it after every class. And mm-hmm. like, there's just so many of them that I couldn't even narrow it down to one. But those right there had the biggest impact on me out of anything that I've had growing up. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think as straight coaches, we can do that. You know, there are many different ways you can do that. Yeah. Um, you know, you could follow the same format that we did in Taekwondo class. You know, yeah. for us, we're a little bit pressed on time. We aren't able to, but... Mm-hmm you know we talk about it when we need to and i think that that is huge and it's a missed opportunity if you aren't but those are those are kind of my tenants that i live my life by and that's Mm. been very impactful on me i like that okay what's the best advice you've ever been given uh the best advice i've ever been given Mm. uh as everybody says it's cliche but Mm. they don't care how much you know until they know how much you care Mm. and the reason being is coach jeff oliver at holy cross said Mm. this to me but he lived it. Yeah. Uh, 
if you've ever had the opportunity to meet Coach Ali, you mm. know exactly what I'm talking about. Mm. Coach Ali is one of those guys, uh, like, you can't quite put your finger on it, but yeah. you don't want to disappoint him. Mm. And it's not like he would get mad at you. Like, I, I don't, I can't think of a time where I've seen him, like, yell or get angry, really. Yeah. Uh, just because every athlete that came in there just wanted to make him proud. And that's mm. how I was when I interned for him. And that's yeah. how I still am today. You mm. know, I just want to, he's one of those people you just want to make him proud like your parents. Um, yeah. And he really lived that quote. Mm. I like that. Okay. So in contrast to that, what's the worst advice you've ever been given? Um, let's think. The worst <laughs> advice I've been yeah. given. <sighs> Another tough one. The... Uh, can I defer by saying there is no bad advice, just uh, learning experiences? Mm. Uh, that's yeah. I mean, that's how if you you know you, people process information differently. So I would agree. You know, there's you learn from everything. So that's how we yes. can, we can take it. So okay, awesome. And then last question, kind of here, right? What projects are you currently working on, and how can people kind of reach out to you and follow your journey? Um, right now, mm. let's see, just before this, mm. I was, well, we haven't actually had a chance to start a wrestling list yet because mm. we started school mm. and then we had a hurricane. So we <laughs> were out all this Fair week. Enough. So right now I've yeah. been planning out their off season. Okay. Um, I already kind of started working on basketball's off season, but right yeah. now is that kind of planning time for yeah. all those sports okay. for the year. So if you guys want to talk wrestling, yeah. uh, basketball, yeah. soccer, I've already kind of got started cause they've been here since August. Uh -huh. Same thing with cross country, but always down to talk about that mm. stuff like I just started the non-travel stuff you know I've been doing non-travel for four years now mm. but I'm always looking for ways to improve them yeah so it's kind of like my projects right now that I'm okay. working on are those kind of kind of you know first few weeks of school plans that kind of yeah. set up the rest of the school year mm. okay and then also I'll just take this little time to shameless plug and shout you out for uh for the chapter you contributed to the to the most recent book in the oh, game thank of you very much so uh Young coaches, I think that's that's going to be huge for you as well, right? Because that's, I mean, even up until recently, even up until now, I'm looking at education, right? And so um, I think education and knowing what, what like routes in education that you need to take or that you could take or that are even available to you, I think that's a really important thing. So I think that is a very big resource as well. Yes, no, you did a fantastic job with that. That's huge. We've been needing something like that for mm -hmm young up and coming coaches, you know, it's like I said, pay it forward. That stuff that you wish you had. Yeah. Um, making sure that you're actually giving it to the people that are coming after you. Yeah, that's big. That's big. Awesome. Well, I think this has been fantastic. There's a lot, a lot of good stuff on here. Hard to believe this is your first podcast, you know, but I'm honored that you were uh, able to be on this one versus yes, any of the others out there. thank you very much for having me. So, um, yeah, this has been fantastic and I look forward to connecting again soon in the future. Yes, sir. Sounds good. If anybody's out there and wants to connect, mm -hmm. uh, you can find me on Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter at Mike underscore Morg. Mm -hmm. I'm always happy to talk shop. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, thanks again, Coach. All right. Take care.